God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Faith Brings Change. I just want to come on here and see how uh, everybody's doing, if, if you're doing well. And, uh, you know, uh, some of you left comments and things. And, and there haven't been many. I, I, I'll be honest. You know, this channel isn't very big. You guys, you guys all know that. Uh, I do pray for people on here. And I'm still writing. Uh, I got a lot of interesting dreams from the Lord when I was sleeping. Uh, different stuff he was showing me about the end days and the Antichrist. And giving me lots of types and shadows and talking to me about that world government. And he also, I'm kind of, uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, because we agreed to do these characters. We're kind of like multiversing uh, Marvel, DC, a lot of the characters because... It's it's not so much the character itself that they write is it's the wine the storyline they're pouring into it so we're pouring out those old storylines making a new different characters he gave me this character Cable in a dream I didn't expect it was like me and my brother reading the comic book of it we see this colorful war paint this red this silverish white this yellowish green it's a, it's a yellowish kind of green or whatever on his face and I'm thinking wow that's bizarre but that looks really cool you know and I wake up and I try to research this and there's this war paint they did when they would go to war I think it was it was Russia or somebody but when they would go to war with the enemy they would do super colorful things like camouflage on their uh ships or whatever instead of invisibility super colorful ships and it would really confuse the enemy they wouldn't be able to see them because those colors are all blended in and, and the sun and everything and I pictured, you know, because we have a different Deadpool, maybe Redpool, we have a different character. He's not like the other one, you know, the, the really perverted one or anything. But he is really goofy, just like him, you know, a multiverse version. And uh, and maybe saying, oh, you look cute, you know, or whatever. And uh, and and actually, when I researched about that war stuff, when they're doing those colorful things, they would even play music to confuse the enemy they would play anything from metallica to uh britney spears or whatever and confuse the enemy they actually say it worked you know playing colorful music and i thought it was just funny because the angels they do a lot of jokes and everything but these are their ideas they're bringing you know and i was hearing that hey mickey you're so fine you're so flying you blow my mind i was hearing that song and maybe that's like what uh another alternate deadpool character is going to be singing to cable just to make fun of him but I thought it was funny, and it's, yeah, you would never think that, that God, that Jesus would be this unreligious and everything, because he told me to renounce, and I gave up throughout all that stuff, you know, the statues and comic books, I threw out all the things, but this is something different, this is something like for a writing project, we're writing, and we're multiverse, and we're telling you, the versions of these characters in the world, and, and, you know, in movies are not the characters of the Lord, they're, they're, devilish because of the doctrines but these are these are more like multiverse heaven stuff uh heaven's perspective there's a character called strife who's a clone of i didn't even know he's called strife but he's a clone of uh nathan summers or nathan dayspring which is supposed to be cable cable's a character it's supposed to be scott summers uh, who is Cyclops, he's supposed to be his son, and, uh, I believe a clone of Jean Grey or something like that, uh, something like that, and anyway, so there's this alternate version of Cable that's like a clone of him trying to impersonate him, and I guess God was leading me to that, that character Strife, because when we get into things we do, and we make enemies or something, different things, and the enemy can impersonate us in the other person's mind to make us, to make them think, we're a hundred times worse than we really are. And a typical example of this is in the tabloids when, when uh, there can be little scandals or whatever and the media can blow it up way worse than it can to make it, you vilify a person. And then people go on there and do a bunch of exposure videos. And just about tactics of deception of the enemy, I think that's why he was showing me Cable in this Strife character to, to uh, not stir up Strife because you can really put an image of people in their mind of what somebody's not like you know and vilify them and i think he's trying to show me that to speak on some of these issues culturally and about you know the importance of forgiveness and everything and and we we see a person we have a certain mold of them if they do something if they have a bad reputation a bad name then 
it's like they the church never forgives them and so like there's a lot of exposure videos going on and there's no love or, or praying for people you know <coughs> and so we got to be very careful of that but uh I thought it was cool, you know, how the angels just giving me a lot of different scenes and, and things. And uh, they're still showing, working on the Superman storyline, showing me stuff. And uh, I did see a vision like a while back of him showing me like this Superman character, I guess, to represent this whole Elijah role taking on and everything. But uh, the, a character for Tom Welling. And he I think he never really got the uh, what do you call it? He never got the, uh, they had him kind of wear a suit at the end of the season, but it wasn't really good. It was more like Brian Singer's version of Superman and everything. But, uh, this one looks more, I saw the suit that they were wearing. These were angels acting this part out, but I saw it and man, it looked awesome. Like he, it looked like Superman, you know, and having Lex fight him, I guess, and having character dark side and everything. And it's representing this whole battle between elijah and the prophets of uh, bell maybe you know the antichrist or that false prophet i guess he would be like a lex lex luther type you know lex was a, a rich person a really rich person but he wanted to uh, exploit uh clark you know in the series they were friends at first but he got close to him in order to uh find out more about him and, and there are people you know and and uh brothers and sisters in the lord that sometimes we and I'm not saying it's anybody here, but uh, it's just interesting that th they can uh, be your friends, but they want to, you know, there's a lot of betrayals, I guess you could say, in the body of Christ. And I guess maybe that's why he's speaking on some of these issues. And he's showing about how it was the wine that poisoned Alexander the Great back in the old days. Uh, this guy, Cassander, gave him this wine and, and it was poisoned and it killed him, you know. And there's a scene he showed me of uh, Lex uh, poisoning Clark. You know, Lex gets that name after Alexander the Great, you know. And, and they even reference that in the, in the show. And so it's it's good to have historical references. And actually, Alexander the Great, guys, was the fifth head of the seven heads, the seven kings that are fallen in the book of Revelation. He was a fifth one back in his day. There was probably going to be seven more kings, and they're going to represent those ones of old but i'll tell you because he showed me this he showed me all seven kings that were fallen who they were they're in the book of daniel right there you know for us but uh i don't know i just thought that was pretty cool you know i don't know i'm the only one i guess getting dreams where the lord is kind of giving me storylines to kind of uh mirror like stuff that's happening in the body of Christ and in the world and there are parables and allegories in the Bible all over the place you know that teach stuff and I wanted to teach stuff and in order to teach stuff you have to have symbolism like and, and you know Jesus said this represented this that represented that it's the same thing so what better way you know you have a character called strife to represent strife you know and uh different things you know and I, i'm glad he gave me these these uh 17 representations of these demons because now i have 17 different representations of those kings of old that came or at least the spirit that was moving them like this pinhead spirit he's a spirit of r revelry he he was motivating the first uh king of the seven in the book of uh well, it talks about in the book of uh, Revelation, you know, seven kings, five of them are fallen. And, and the first of the five was Ptolemy. Ptolemy. You know, and he sat on the mountain. A mountain is also for a sphere of influence, of education. And he was the spirit of revelry, letting it all hang out. So they're teaching the kids to let it all hang out, to let do whatever you feel like. Christmas is a great example of this. It was created a holiday where back in the day they would uh i think it was for saturn saturnalia or whatever but they would let it all hang out and drink and do all this stuff it's a spirit of perversion and there was a lot of incest in that kingdom the king of the north the king of the south you know in the book of uh, uh daniel chapter 11 i believe ptolemy yeah ptolemy was for the king of the south or, or the ptolemaic empire 
and then Seleucus was the second king of, of, of the five that are fallen. And he was uh, the king of the uh, north, the Seleucus Empire, the Silicud Empire of the north. And th they were going back at it, and it was a, a line of many kings going back and forth. And there were, there were four kings of Persia and six Syrian wars that it's detailing. And he's been showing me some of this. And so some of this, it's, it's cool to get, like, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing these, uh, characters and stuff, but we're going back, throwing back to history and stuff and, 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 and put in, put in historical references to the Bible just to make it more fun to listen to and, and, and read, you know. But yeah, there was, there was, uh, Ptolemy. If you want to know the, if you want to know who these eight kings are, back in the old day, old days, guys, it was Ptolemy the first, meaning aggression. The first, he was called Ptolemy the first savior, the savior, and then uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. So that means aggression is the first savior. Aggression is going to save us, you know. The spirit of revelry drove him. And then the second of the five fallen kings is uh, Seleucus. One, Seleucus the first Nicator. And Nicator means conqueror. Seleucus the first conqueror. It actually may mean, Seleucus may mean bright white, the first conqueror. And so this dark night spirit of drunkenness drove this king. It drove him, you know. And he would have a glass of wine, an extra glass of wine before uh, something. Either he, I can't remember when, you know, when he would take his mills and everything. He'd always have an extra glass of wine. But there's a spirit of drunkenness, basically. And it motivated this Seleucus, Seleucus Seleucus dynasty, you know, or whatever, of uh, the king of the north, you know. Uh, there's a spirit of drunkenness. You can't see, you know, you're fighting the wrong way, you know. You can get drunk spiritually off of anger and rage, and it can make you impaired just like you would when you would drink, and you wouldn't know what you're doing, and you can just blow up on somebody. And then the third head, uh, or the third king of the, the five that are fallen is Cassander. He's the one that murdered the fifth head, Alexander the Great. And uh, I can't remember what his name means. Uh, I can't, brother of heroes, I think, you know. And so the spirit of murder motivated him. He was a murderer. And the fourth one was Lysimachus. It means loosening in battle. And he lined up exactly in the order that I'd already seen it like a year back or whatever. This Wolverine type spirit. Loosening into battle, you know. He was put in... He was accused of some trespass of letting some criminal of Alexander the Great go. And he threw him into some kind of lion's den. And But he was said to have wrestled, overpowered the lion, killed him. And so he's that Wolverine type spirit of envy. Envy motivated him. He was envious, thought he could do better, I guess, than Alexander the Great. But Alexander the Great ended up liking him and everything. But uh, he he was envious, you know, loosening into battle. Kind of like the Wolverine, the Weapon X would be loosened into battle, you know. Lysimachus, you know, he was a, that Logan type, you know, spirit. Logan's run. But, uh, and then there was, uh, I'm trying to see, the fifth one was Alexander the Great of heresy, basically. Those were the five fallen kings, you know, part of that leopard body, you know, the leopard of Alexander the Great, and then the four heads he appointed to, to his kingdom. And then the bear had two kings, that's the sixth and seventh of Xerxes the first of Persia. He was the fourth king of Persia. Remember it said there would be four kings of Persia stir up Grisha and Daniel chapter 11. Well, yeah, he's the sixth head of the seven, or the sixth king back then. And then the seventh was Darius Condos. Not the Darius in the Bible, but another Darius. And he only continued a short space, like Revelation said, you know. One is Xerxes, you know, of Persia, you know, and the other is not yet come. When he comes, he must continue a short space. Back in the day, it was him, and he only continued three years to reign. And he was defeated by Alexander the Great. And the eighth, back then, it was King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the heart that gave 
the man's heart who gave his heart over to a beast like a lion, you know, and became a beast for seven years. And so he's a type of that beast, you know, that eighth king. And so when it lists one through five, six, and seven, it's in the reverse order. You take the leopard and then the bear and then the lion and you got the eight kings, you know, for revelation. And then you get the 10 of the kingdom of Rome, basically, plus that 11th king. And the 12th is a mystery. But anyways, I was just sharing some of that with you guys, uh, what God is doing and what he's t teaching me about. And uh, there's a lot of uh, rich stuff in the word of God and history. You just got to be guided by the spirit of God, guys. But I love you. I am praying for you. Until next time, shalom.